up in a house full of Echevarrias. Echevarria, it's my last name, my family last name. And it traveled from La Nestosa, Spain, to Durango, Mexico, to finally settle in the southern part of Mexico in Guadalajara, Jalisco. For me and for my family, carrying the last name Echevarria, it's proud. We feel honored to carry that last name because for us, it means to be pioneers, to be empowered, to be on the pursuit of our dreams, and also to live life with joy. And the best person that was able to characterize all of those traits was my grandmother, Andrea, mi abuela. She was about four feet tall. She was this tiny little thing, but she had the attitude, the aura, and the presence of a giant. No one ever dared to contradict her. No one even ever tried because you know how that would have gone. She raised her six children by herself, almost, because my grandfather lived and worked in a ranch far away, and he would only come you know, a few times per year. So all of those traits of empowerment, all of those traits of security carry on throughout the different generations. And I was blessed to be raised by her. So every day I had the opportunity to see her rituals. After finishing up all her chores, she will make up her sale um, face mask, whether it was oatmeal or avocado, and she would lay down with her feet up for 30 minutes. She will then get up, get on his knee, her knees, and she would pray. And every day she would cry when she would pray. And I couldn't understand what could hurt so much for someone who, on the other hand, was enthusiastic about life, who got up every morning and used to sing when she watered her plants and who used to spend time reading novels and who would go to the movies to see love stories and who will tell us poems during lunch. How could someone so full of life and so joyful at the same time every single day cry? So when I got married, I moved away to another state, and on top of our weekly calls, we became pen pals, and we exchanged many letters throughout the years. And finally, during that one time, I decided to ask her the question of what caused her to be, you know, what was so painful for her? And this was her response. My dearest granddaughter, regarding your question... I have been very fortunate to find love in my life, to have given birth to 11 children, but God took away five of them, one after the other. For 10 years, I lived the joy of being pregnant and then the pain of losing a healthy born baby. It was not until your Aunt Martha that the next five children, five beautiful, strong girls, survived. Every day, I dedicate a few minutes to count my blessings and cry out of joy for having them, for having you in my life. My advice to you is don't let the painful moments diminish the great moments in life. Count your blessings, and when difficult situations appear or you are in fear, just take the bull by the horns. So I have taken this advice to heart. And I have taken the bull by the horns in many occasions. And I'm going to just share three quick stories. One of them is when with my husband and I decided to come to this country with $958. We didn't have a job. We didn't have a home. But we knew and we knew our, the security that we had. And that bag was full of dreams to pursue. The second one in corporate America, when I decided to apply for a job that was two levels higher than when I was sitting. And to my surprise, I was given that opportunity. But I was full of fear. So I decided to grab that bull by the horns and move forward with that and show them that I was more than capable to take on that role. And the third one, is being here today. As exciting as it sounds, it's also a moment where we question ourselves. And I think everyone has touched upon that. Are we capable of doing it? Are we good enough to be up here standing and sharing our message? But who has not felt fear before? Of many reasons. 
fear of failure, fear of not being qualified for that job, fear of anything, you name it. And fear, it's, it's common. It's natural. It's okay to feel it, especially because it's a sign of growth. It's a sign that you're stretching. It's a sign that you're stepping outside of your comfort zone. But most importantly, it's a sign that we are moving in the direction of our dreams. So today, I ask you, what are we going to do with that fear? How are we going to conquer it? We're going to look at it straight on the eyes, and we're not going to let it decide the path that we're going to take. We own our path. Number two, we're going to become confident and courageous to continue to pursue our dreams because we own that. We owe it to ourselves. And number three, We're going to become inspiring. We're going to inspire the next generations, the generations that are coming behind us and who are counting on us to show them that there's light at the end of the tunnel and that they should keep going. And today, in honor of mi abuela, in honor of that Echevarria tribe here in the New York Times in New York City, I decide to stand strong and to commit to continue to move forward in the pursuit of my dreams. And I invite you all that when in fear, you grab that bull by the horns. My name is Claudia Vasquez, but I was born Claudia Gomez Echevarria. Thank you. Wow.